Okay, let's move inferiorly in terms of our discussion of the skeletal muscle from the thorax into the abdomen. And skeletal muscle plays a huge role in terms of the abdomen. But before we really get into the specific muscles here, let's talk about the muscle that's in between the thorax and the abdomen, and that is your diaphragm. And we've all probably heard of our diaphragm, and we know very important in terms of breathing. And I have here, its, it's main action is the chief muscle of inspiration, or think of uh, breathing in. But really, when you're talking about breathing, this is the main muscle in terms of breathing, because the, the main force in terms of expiration is really gravity. So the only muscle that's playing a role, uh, uh, active role, most of the time is the diaphragm. This is one of those skeletal muscles, which obviously has a voluntary component, but also an involuntary component. So you're not always thinking about, I need to contract my diaphragm in order to breathe. You do have a level of involuntary control here as well. So let's look at this actual dissection here. You can see um, that the anterior portion of your thorax, so the ribs, or the majority of your ribs have been removed, and you're inside your thorax. Your lungs would be right here, your heart, would be right here, all right? And then you see this double domed muscle, and this is your diaphragm. So thorax is up here, and then your abdomen is right here. So if I were to remove this region of peritoneum, you'd be looking at your intestines, all right? And the liver is hiding out right here, right underneath the diaphragm. So really serves to separate the thorax as well as the abdomen. Now this is going to be innervated by your phrenic nerve. If you've ever heard three, uh, C3, 4, and 5, keep the diaphragm alive. So you have uh, spinal nerve C3, 4, and 5, um, portions of that coming together to innervate the diaphragm. They're traveling down, you can see it a little bit right here, to the diaphragm. So as, it, as we talked about, very important in terms of breathing. When you breathe, or when you inspirate, it's going to push the center portion of the diaphragm down, okay? So it's moving not only the diaphragm down, but it's kind of it's compressing on those ab the abdominal viscera as well. All right, so that's the main muscle that's really dividing the thorax and the abdomen. Now let's talk about the muscle specific to the abdomen. And the key here, and as you can see, I have it in all caps, we have no bones anteriorly. So you have to have a very strong complex of muscles as well as tendons in this area to protect the anterior portion of your abdomen. In the posterior portion, of course, you have your spinal column that will play a role in terms of protection. So let's talk about the muscles on this side. We refer to these as the muscles of the anterior lateral. Uh, abdominal wall. A lot of times we think of them being more lateral, but they do extend anteriorly as well. So the two main muscles here are your external and internal obliques, okay? And they actually, their, their muscle fibers are going to go in the same direction as the external and internal intercostal muscles. So external obliques Think hands in the pocket in terms of which way the muscle fibers work, and the internal obliques are going to be perpendicular to that. And that crisscrossing is really important in terms of protection. Now, deep to the internal obliques, you'll have your transversus abdominis, and as its name would indicate, the fibers are going to be transverse. And the main action of these muscles is to actually just support, and in times of... Um, a contraction to compress the deep abdominal viscera or the viscera associated with the gastrointestinal system. Additionally, if you think about doing an oblique crunch in terms of lateral flexion of the abdomen, these muscles will play a role. So let's look at this actual image here. You can see the superficial external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis, and then you're actually getting into your parietal peritoneum, which play a big role in terms of allowing for the movement of your GI system. So, now all of those muscles, of course, are going to have tendons associated with them, like all muscles do, and they are going to coalesce anteriorly to this very thick, very important uh, rectus sheath, and that's what all of this white portion right here is a component of your rectus sheath. So covering the superficial portion of your anterior abdomen. So all these tendons are just interlacing in this region. 
and they're all going to meet up in the middle in what we refer to as the linea alba. And that's this particularly white portion right down the middle. You have your umbilicus right there in the middle. So you're going to extend from the xiphoid process, remember that's the most inferior portion of your sternum, all the way to the pubic symphysis, which is the anterior portion of your pelvic girdle. So quite an expanse in terms of that. Now, if you were to reflect your rectus sheath, which is what's happening here, you're looking at your straight muscle which, of the abdomen, which is your rectus abdominis. And it has a similar length as what you had with the rectus sheath. So here, the rectus sheath is intact, and we've reflected it here. Now, one thing I want you to note in terms of the rectus abdominis is you have what's referred to as tendinous intersections. And these are just portions of tendon that really f help to anchor the rectus abdominis to the rectus sheath. And this is what will give that six pack or eight pack appearance if um, those muscles have enlarged in those regions. It's because these can enlarge, but the tendinous intersections cannot. So it'll give that appearance of the six pack. This is the main muscle in terms of flexion of the trunk. So if you think of a typical crunch or sit up, and you're flexing that way, that is the rectus abdominis really playing a role. But similar to uh, the anterior lateral muscles, it will play a role in terms of compression of the abdominal viscera as well. So that is the discussion in terms of the abdomen. We are going to continue. We're going to move inferiorly towards the pelvic girdle and muscles associated with that.